In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. First, a little homily. We all think that this story from the Gospels is about giving up a good job and a good life and following off into the unknown. Giving up everything we love or dream of or hope for. This is always, especially in the more evangelical churches, a call to sacrifice and give up everything to come and follow Jesus. In truth, Fishing in Jesus' time was a horrible job that almost nobody wanted, with almost no reward. Caesar and Rome had the entire industry, if you would call it that, tied up in taxes and tariffs and outright theft. If you owned your own boat, you were really lucky. If you caught fish today, you might get to eat. The biggest and the nicest fish were taken from you as soon as your boat docked, and that went to Rome and the wealthy who could dine leisurely on good fish. Anything decent went to the markets for others to buy, and then if there was anything left at the bottom of the boat, some little scrum or whatever, it would be yours and you could eat. And you got to pay for all of it, with taxes, tariffs, and theft. Not a fun life, a hard, dreadful, dismal life. So when Jesus walks along the shore and he calls Peter and Andrew and James and John, they think they've won the lottery. <laughs> okay, I'm with you, man. Let's go. What are we going to do? They jumped at it. And frankly, if you lived that kind of life before, wouldn't you do it too? The challenge of fishing for people was about upending a system, righting the wrong done in a very cruel world so that everybody could eat and everybody could live. It wasn't sacrifice, it was freedom. It wasn't about losing a dream, leaving your father for another job somewhere else that you might not ever see him again. But it was about finding something, something that you'd craved for all your life and up until that moment was never ever an option. Maybe it was about celebrating something, even if it would be hard. Following are the vital statistics of St. Clair's. I report on them every year on this day when we have this annual meeting. It's partly used to be required um, that I share this information with you all. Now it's just kind of become sort of routine after 20 some years. After three years of COVID, we offered communion in person almost every Sunday, yes. And we had holy days again, and we celebrated socially. Our average Sunday attendance is still above COVID num pre-COVID numbers. That's awesome. Some people are just getting back there. This year, I officiated at the marriage of A.J. Fry and Emily Gall. This summer it was wonderful. It was up at Alpenthal. Beautiful day. We baptized Robbie and Henry a couple weeks ago, brought two new members into the church. All of those are things to celebrate. In the last year, Peggy, Jennifer, Maureen, all new members joined us and Dan and Bertu and Elif were finally able to join us in person. Yay. Yay! Two of the three are home right now because there's a baby due any minute. Lisa Ozida was ordained to the diaconate. 
She will be ordained to the priesthood in June. Also things to really celebrate. As is always the case, people leave. Lydia and Shirley Pizzotto and Elizabeth Winstanley moved away. They moved far away. But they stay in touch. I, every Sunday somebody will say to me, oh, I talked to Lydia the other day. They're doing well. They're doing okay. It's all good. And the friendships we made are worth celebrating. Sadly, we lost more people to God's eternal life this past year than all the others combined. It was a tough year to lose people. My mom, Mary Thomas, Paul Yarnton, Sally Shakib, who we barely got to know, but trained us well to do CPR and take care of each other if something happens. Our neighbor, Chuck Crona, Cindy's mom, Shirley. I preached at or organized at least three other celebrations of life, and they are celebrations of life. And we have all prayed for others, many others. It is always hard, but we do celebrate their lives. We have paid our bills, supported others, cared for the sick and lonely, made outreach a priority, laughed and cried together, and been faithful in listening to Jesus alone and all together, to do that within us and to take that love out there and spread the gospel. That is worth celebrating. Those are the statistics, the numbers. But each of these names, each of these things is important in the life of the church, this church. We know or knew those people. They shared their stories with us and we with them. In a report like this, we can just see words on a piece of paper or in a word doc that gets set into the diocese to say, yeah, we had this meeting and yeah, this happened. But when we hear those people's names, when we think about the things that we have done, they are right here in the midst of us. They're here this morning. That's why I'm wearing my pin. Paul's here. Lydia and Shirley are here. Sally's here. That other Shirley is here. They're all here because they're here in our hearts. They're in the midst of us. For all of them, I give thanks. They have made us who we are. They were called to be with us, just like Simon and Andrew, just like James and John. We lose your dad this year, Julie, this year? Uh, last December. Last just December, just around a year. Yeah. And we lost Brian Holcomb. Yeah, and we'll do his celebration of life in another couple of months. They all heard Jesus say, come and follow me. Whether they knew it or not, those guys, those guys and their families, because probably their wives and their children went along with them, we just don't know them by name. They were making disciples of us by their love the work of their hands and their hearts was what made the church what it was and it makes this church what it is. And we have all been blessed. It's taken many hours, some blood, sweat and tears, but it's been grace, not sacrifice. And I would guess most of us wouldn't have changed anything to be part of this place. And I know that there are many people here for whom someone has said, come, follow, come see what's going on. And you're here today. The elephant in the room is that this is my last annual meeting. <laughs> and nobody wants to talk about it. People are kind of just on the verge of tears and hysteria and whatever else. And I'm celebrating, um, and I'm also sad, but 
The psalmist this morning says, Put your trust in him, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Hold on to that. Hold on to that. It isn't all about sacrifice. It hasn't ever been all about sacrifice. It has been about freedom and hope. It wasn't about losing a dream to be here. It was about finding and following one. And that's not just about me. That's about all of us. And it is definitely about celebrating something. And there may be tears. No doubt there will be tears. I can tell you I'm what they call in Yiddish lore a pisher. You ever heard of the word pisher? Yeah, Lynette has in the back. A crier, a crier, a sobber, an ugly crier. <laughs> sorry, sorry. But it is about something to celebrate. And we will celebrate. And we will continue to celebrate in our own ways throughout the coming years. I have no doubt about that. So with that... I would like to open up the annual meeting for today. Um, that first thing that we're going to do is call Jill up here as senior warden to open up the meeting. And if she has a few things to say, we're going to let her do that. And I'm going to sort of stick right over here because I'm going to be back and forth. Well, actually, I'm going to go this way first. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is my first talk or speech as senior warden ever. So please bear with me. And it's my last one with Patty. Uh, thank you. It's been an honor uh, serving in this capacity this year with, with Patty, especially in her last year here. You know, when my term as senior warden began, I started keeping a list of things I wanted to mention at the annual meeting. There were a lot of things on that list, and lucky for you, I lost the list. <laughs> I did. I searched high and low. Anyway, I do remember my first memory, my first event here as senior warden. I was in the kitchen flipping pancakes, and our old stove gave up the ghost, and sparks and fire began shooting out of the oven. At that point, I'm thinking, oh, this better not be a sign of what's to come. But we survived. We also survived the roof inspection and even began working on repairing the paint and siding thanks to a grant from the diocese. Then I thought about all the things that make us who we are. It's not only the care of our worship space and our property, but the care we give to each other and the greater community. We pray for those who need our prayers. We make prayer shawls for those who need special comfort. And we deliver meals to those who need some extra love and support. In addition, through the work of dedicated individuals in our congregation, we provide meaningful Christian education for our youth and adults. Hundreds of pounds of produce from our garden are delivered to the food bank. We provide meals to reclaim shelter, provide support to Echo Glen, and we provide clients at the food bank with many essentials. Please forgive me if I forgot something, but we do a lot. <laughs> Let's not forget all who come to worship at church and on Zoom, those who are members of the Altar Guild, the Zoom masters, the communion bread bakers, the readers, the ushers, the acolyte servers, those who bring flowers, prepare coffee hour, and our talented staff who provide our music, assist with planning and creating meaningful worship experiences design our newsletters, manage our presence on the web, and keep our facility clean and tidy. I also want to mention the Bishop's Committee and all who have served on a variety of church committees. With special mention to our treasurer who helps us manage our finances. And of course, our beloved Patty, our vicar, whom we dearly love and treasure. Are you seeing a theme here? We all are an important part of the process. 
through our time, talent, treasures, and prayer, we all give in so many ways. We are St. Clair's, and we grow in God to serve the community. Amen. Did you call the meeting to order? Oh, no. <laughs> you can, you can do that and then go again? sit down. No. You can do that and then go sit down. Okay. I now call this meeting to order. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, the next thing I would like to do is, uh, which is always a fun thing to do, is to recognize uh, that we have basically four new Bishops Committee members coming on board with your approval. Um, if you're here, why don't you come forward? I know James is online, but um, Lisa, hearing, and um, I saw... Dan, Dan, you're going to sit there back there, but we'll recognize you. Um, uh, yeah, and well, actually, okay, all right. So, Dan, you come forward. Jill, you want to come back forward, please? Up and down, get your exercise in. And uh, Lisa, so, all right. So um, this is a, a bit of an unusual year in that um, we have two people who have served on the Bishops Committee who are for one reason or another needing to go off. Um, one of those people is um, Abby who has asked to do other things this coming year. Um, life's gotten busy and she's got some other things she wants to do. Um, she's not going anywhere. She's just asked to not be on the Bishop's Committee for her last year. The other person is Lynette, who um, is now on staff and will remain as our clerk, which is the person that takes notes and all those fun stuff, fun things. Um, and that is a two-year term that one of these people, they can fight over it. But... Um, <laughs> but um, Jill has agreed to serve for... Uh, one year for Abby um, as a continual person on the Bishop's Committee. She doesn't have to be the senior warden, but she will be a continuing presence along with Martha and Sue on the Bishop's Committee. And Brittany. And Brittany. Yes, and Brittany. <laughs> I, it's like the seven dwarfs. You can never remember all seven of them. That's, you can never. So, um, I present to you, and James, if you're on and you want to make yourself seen, you don't have to, but there he is. All right. Um, I present to you, this congregation, uh, new Bishops Committee members, Lisa Hearing, Jill Juling, James Henderson, and Daniel Hoff. And if somebody would move to elect those people. Okay, Larry, and a second, Diane. Um, all those in favor of approving the slate, say aye. aye. All right. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anybody opposed? All right. Congratulations and thank you. And God bless you. We will um, commission you all at the end of the service. Thank you. Yeah, and Martha too. Is she online? Not this morning. Yeah. Yes. There are seven of you now. That was eight fingers, though. I know. Seven. Seven, seven, seven. It's like the seven dwarfs, though. I, every, every time I ever go to list them all, to send an email if I don't have them in the bulk, in the group deal, it's like, it's one, two, three, and there's always somebody left. It happens. Murphy's Law, yeah, yeah, Idiot's Law. Yeah, it's like forgetting Brian. God, how could I do that? 
Um, too close to my heart, I guess. Um, the next item on the agenda this morning is, uh, generally speaking, um, we elect at least one new delegate to diocesan convention. And those, we have two, we are allowed two because of the size of our congregation. And we do that alternately so that one person has been there for a year and then we elect a new person and then, th you know, this kind of thing. Because this spring in May, we are electing a new bishop, the two people that are currently serving, who is Julia Richmond and Martha Marino, will be continuing on because they have already been vetted to be our delegates at the electing convention. So we don't need to do anything about that other than for us to say that these two people will represent us, you, at diocesan convention, a special election is always called when we elect a new bishop. Um, I think it's May 18th. So they will represent St. Clair's and um, we will elect a new bishop in this diocese. Um, bishop Greg did an absolutely fabulous, fabulous job as a bishop. Did a lot of work with healing and making us stronger. Um, bishop Melissa has fulfilled an amazing role as um, bishop uh, during this last year or so. It's ended up being far more work than she thought it was going to be, but she has done it with an amazing amount of grace and presence. And I'm very grateful over the course of time to have both of those people be our bishops. And just sort of as an aside to know that as a mission church, I am here as vicar, but to be honest, your rector is the bishop. Now, there are a hundred organizations within this diocese. A little over half, maybe closer to two thirds, are mission churches. Yeah, probably half, I guess. And there's no way that the bishop can be in all those 50 places. So vicars are assigned or priests in charge are assigned to do the work that the bishop can't do because they can't be everywhere all at once. They haven't figured out how to bilocate, trilocate, all those things. So just so you know, Julia and Martha are um, continuing as um, our delegates and they will represent you well. Both of them have had some experience at a um, diocesan convention and know what's going on. But that particular, that particular gathering in May will just be around electing a new bishop. So keep them in your prayers. It's a big job. I read the other day that they have finished with the Zoom interviews with the potential candidates. And um, those candidates will be announced here probably late February, my guess. Um, and they will make visitations around the diocese. Um, and um, I'm sure some of it will be on Zoom so that you can, we can all meet them um, with that, I'm going to turn things over to Ted to um, share with us our budget report. And you're all in luck because you get to vote on the budget this year. <laughs> Who knew? Good, nor good morning. Um, we are in good shape. We are in great shape. We are, you know, can I sit down now? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Just give us the great numbers and then maybe. <laughs> Their applause will tell you when you can sit yeah, down. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Uh, so uh, do I get a pie chart up here? What do we got going here? There we go. Uh, find one that says 2023, maybe the number two. Uh-oh. <laughs> Page, uh -oh. Page down? Page down is what I heard. This is why I didn't do it. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there you go. There's your actual expenses. Uh, if you remember last uh, annual meeting, we challenged ourselves to uh, a, a, a new outbreak. Uh, there was uh, large increases in pay and there was large outreach that we wanted to do and all that kind of stuff. Um, the unrestricted giving 
So we set a budget of about $160,000. Uh, the unrestricted giving uh, was about $30,000 under budget. However, the good news is the, uh, the special giving, most notably uh, very large in, uh, contribution to the building fund, memorials for Mary Thomas, memorials for other thing. In other words, special giving uh, made up the difference so that we ended up this year uh, with roughly the same caches that we had last year. Um, the DIF, which is the Diocese Investment Fund, which always worries me as a non as a as a nonprofit or a non business, I always worry about investing in the stock market. But uh, uh, this year it uh, earned us about 7.5 percent. All of that in the last three months. So I was it was it made us about 4,200 dollars this year as opposed to losing 5,000 last year. So. Uh, that's, that's the type of thing that happened, as Patty keeps telling me over, over and over and over again as I get concerned about paying bills that, uh, you know, the Lord will provide, and he certainly does, or she certainly does. <laughs> okay, so uh, you can see there that uh, outreach, the operation, and then the, uh, the worship and the vicar is the largest amount of the expense. All right, if, can we move on there, Dan? All right, the budget. I would like to thank uh, uh, Peggy Young and Martha Marino for helping with putting this budget together. Uh, you can see that we spent 157,000 last year and the headline there says that the budget for this year is 128,009. Uh, of course, that uh, is because we don't have a vicar. <laughs> <laughs> or we are going to do 10 months without a vicar. Uh, or maybe, who knows what we're going to do. But anyway, budget-wise, we budgeted uh, actual expenses for the vicar that we know of. And then uh, for the rest of the year, for each uh, week, uh, we, I ended up budgeting $600 a week for supply ministers. Uh, and various type expenses of that nature. Uh, so the, uh, the per diem for the minister to come, I, I was uniquely surprised when I read all of it, but anyway, is, is $231 a week plus mileage. Um, and of course, if we have prayer meetings and we don't have communion, <laughs> apparently it's less, but <laughs> it's zero. Uh, it's zero. <laughs> zero. Yeah. <laughs> communion costs us $200. Anyway. I love it. Yeah, All right. Uh, so. So, uh, so that made the, so I talked about the, the vicar's portion of the budget. So that means that part of the budget's down about forty thousand dollars from uh, what we would spend uh, for a vicar in the uh, uh, benefits. Um, I increased the budget a little bit for some some outreach. I figured if we weren't paying a, a vicar that. Uh, uh, probably the bishops committee would get uh, more interested in helping others in some fashion one way or another so I I put another four thousand dollars in just for the heck of it so um, the uh, I it's not on here okay let's see let's go to the next one please Dan Oh, that was 2000. I'm sorry. That was 2000. You can see uh, 149.5. I'm sorry, this got out of. I didn't know it was the third. Anyway, actual income is 149. If you remember way back on the first or the second uh, thing, uh, we spent 157. So there you go. All right, let's go to the last one, maybe. There's only three. There's four. There were four. 
All right. <laughs> okay. So you'll have to take my word for it. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm expecting, I, I, for income uh, for 2024, I got income listed at 130, pardon me, wondered why I brought this along. 133,700 is what I'm budgeting for 2024 income. I unrestricted giving, which is your pledges and your loose offerings, I did 85% of last year. Uh, as reported earlier, as people died, people left, so didn't know what to do, so I just picked a number, 85,000 on that. Um, uh, then we have the fundraising and uh, interest in rental, which is pretty much similar to last year. So anyway, this year's budget for income, I have it at 100, just under 134,000, 133,700. We got 128,900 as the uh, budget expenses. So we're hoping budget-wise, I've budgeted $4,800 for uh, extra income. Uh, okay, anybody else? Did not budget for a new vicar in 2024, but if we obviously get one, then we'll change the budget, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and are we prepared to move for one money from one place to another to make that happen? Uh, well, we will be after we figure out how to do it, yeah. But I mean, I mean, we know we're going to take it out of this bucket to put it no, in. No, we don't know. We don't know. Okay. Unrestricted money is tight. Mm -hmm. but the, other, the other thing, too, remember as well, is that you won't be paying a brand new vicar what you're paying this vicar. Thanks be to God. <laughs> <laughs> True. True enough. Ten. Yes, ma'am. I have two questions. Um, one, I don't know whether you know the answer to or not. I understand the figures who proclaimed supply, but if um, Canon Davison assigns us an interim, as, as opposed to you know what I call random freeze supply, um, is there a difference in how an interim gets, is an interim paid more like a regular vicar or is an interim paid more like a supply priest? I, have. I would think they'd be paid more because they're working more. I suppose. It depends on the hours you contract with them for. Mm -hmm. okay. If you contract them for Sunday mornings only, mm -hmm. you're essentially doing the same thing. If you contract them for another, say, five hours mm -hmm. so that there's pastoral care or presence at yeah. stuff, um, then you're then you're talking about adding more, but you're still not going to be anywhere near the level that you are right now, okay. as a congregation. Okay, but do we pay pension for them? And if it's an interim, yes, you will be paying pension for them. Yes, and into their retirement and their health insurance and all that stuff. I believe so, but well, I, yeah, I don't know how the health insurance works, but you will be paying for their pension fund. And then my second question is, how are our pledging units for 2024 compared to our pledging units for 2023? Ooh. <laughs> it's important to keep here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they were pretty meager. Uh, they come in at uh, 61000 for pledging in total. We had uh, 21 or 22 people pledge. Uh, As opposed to usually it's around 30. 30 yeah, 30. last year we had a $90,000 pledge mm -hmm. run. This year it's 60000 mm -hmm. So, yeah. And it could be that uh, I didn't uh, coordinate the pledging real well in terms of how to get it done and when and all that kind well, of stuff. But differently. Yeah. Normally yeah. we run the pledge drive now. Yeah, which yeah. is late. And <laughs> yeah. which, yeah, and most churches run it in October and November. Right. I'd like to see it done in November, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, Dan. Uh, Mary has a question on Zoom. 
Ah. Can you hear me? Yep. When you going forward, when someone asks a question, we can't hear the question too well. I heard Holly, but the first one I couldn't hear. So before you answer it, could you repeat the question for us? You bet. Yes, sorry about that. First question was uh, roughly the same as Holly's is, how much do we pay for an interim and where do we get them and all that? Well, oh, thanks. Okay, it, I will plow ahead. I would uh, uh, encourage a motion and a second for uh, approving the 2024 budget. So I got a um, movement by Pete second. Bullard and a second by Jill. All in favor? Aye. Is there anyone opposed? All right. Thank you. Um, next person to uh, talk to us and give a report is uh, Cindy. Talk about outreach. On outreach. On outreach. I have to say that seeing a number of $22,000 in the budget for outreach is nothing short of amazing for a church this size. Um, I. <laughs> That's about all I can do. Um, do you have the slides? Okay. And so um, every year we um, vote on where our outreach dollars are going to go, and this is the list of where we um, provided. Um, extra assistance. Um, a lot of it is here in the valley and a lot of it is climate oriented for last year. Um, and we'll get to what the, this is the next frame of time that we will allocate more. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but just so you all know exactly what is going on around here, um, can we have the next slide, Dan? So, the, the knitter, I'm going to take this off because I can't don't need see to. it. You don't need to. Oh, I can just move over here? Yep. Um, 325 prayer shawls out uh, prepared by how many knitters? I have 10 to about, 12? I have 16 on the log, uh, on the list, but not that many are, are active. 16, but not that many active. Two, the 290 that are out in the world are in the world. They are not in the United States. They another are in one, another one was shipped to Australia. Another one just went to Australia. It's our third one there. Um, it's an amazing um, and the color. I that that's our array of hats from distribution <laughs> last week. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> A veritable rainbow. Okay. Um, so that's the knitters and the and the crocheters. So in Roughly six years, 350 shawls. We established in 17. Was it 17? I, I apologize. Um, who's next? Oh, the garden. Um, I just got the final tally from the food bank, 838 pounds. I think that's the most we have ever grown. We've had other... Uh, We've had other produce that has been donated when we've had our harvest festival and stuff, and that's usually a lot of weight. And even then, I don't think we've ever had this much. Um, and with uh, Anne's um, skills, it's growing year round, which is absolutely amazing. And you, there's just been a few dedicated people that have been harvesting. It's a thankless job. You, you're out in the summertime in the heat, so if you have, but if you have time, it's a lot of fun. Um, we we've stepped away. Larry and I have stepped away from it because of essentials, but um, it's it's just doing more. Anne would like to find somebody to start training to take over. So if that if gardening is a thing you'd like to be a part of, um, she's willing to train. 
Uh, yes. Small. Then, they were little yeah. Helen, little babies. Yeah. Um, essentials. Um, well, there's your numbers: sixty-three thousand, sixty-three hundred rolls of toilet paper. But <laughs> twenty-five thousand loads of laundry. It finally became true that it's a core product that we can offer on a regular basis. Um, yeah. If I calculated right, I have over 100,000 loads that are going to be delivered sometime between now and the end of February um, to my house. And we have another 5,000 pairs of Bombas <laughs> on their way. <laughs> Thankfully, they were, they were delayed because of the weather. Because um, <laughs> I didn't know where I was going to put them. Um, anyway, the, it takes a lot of people to run this. So thank you if you have helped even once. Um, it's always a lot of fun. Um, it, 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 it's always a sometimes a challenge. Um, and thankfully, we have the new tent this year, mm -hmm. um, which the wind kind of took out. But parts are on the way from China. So <laughs> <laughs> um, that'll get repaired, and we can go back to our big tent. We were really squished last month. Yeah. Um, what's next? Ah, 360 meals last year. Wow. wow. That is, and that's, six, that's if we, that's just donating, doing it every other month. Um, but when we do it, we are providing three meals a day and the snacks. Um, ministry Sunday, I'm sure we'll be having another ministry. Well, I don't know if we'll have another ministry Sunday because they are changing their model. Um, they're yeah. going to a motel model. I don't know what that's gonna, how that's gonna play out, and I don't know that any. Oh, where's the new building? Where's the new building? I don't know. Oh, so they're only going um, to the motel model until they have a new building. Um, stay tuned, I guess. And people that brought food today, yeah. there's a table in, in the social hall where you can dump your stuff. Yep. Um, next up. Oh, last. I put the rummage sale on here. The rummage sale isn't really out, kind, it is kind of outreach, mm -hmm. I think. It is. Um, we keep things out of landfills. Um, we pass on everything that um, we can. We've had, is it the, um, what's the name of the thrift store down here? Well, no. some of it goes, the treasures. Treasures. treasures in Heaven has come and shopped and taken some of the stuff away. And um, it that last year that produced that raised thirty five hundred dollars, which is thirty five hundred dollars toward the budget that also allowed us to maintain the other forms of outreach. And so I can't stress enough how much that fundraiser kind of really does help this church continue with its outreach efforts. Um, we also have Diane, who faithfully goes to Echo Glen every single month. Um, I think Valentines are on their way again this year. And I'm hoping that Kelly's coordinating that. Mm -hmm. Kelly is coordinating Valentines, yes. Kelly and Peyton are coordinating handmade Valentines. Please bring them by uh, repeat. Is that in the what's new? Yeah. Right. yeah, so if you can bring Valentines, they need to be here when? Uh, the 11th, which is the, the Sunday before the 14th. That is, yes, okay. Um, and you know, the building, even though we don't have, even though we're not here every day, we do have groups that do use the building and all are welcome. I think we can't say that enough. So that's what, th that's what you guys do in the world. And it's just an amazing thing. And I know there's probably more that, um, that, I can't even think of. Mm -hmm. And so, as I said, our, our last thing um, for outreach is to decide where um, the outreach money is going to go this year. Mm -hmm. And Patty and I have worked on this mm -hmm. every year, um, trying to select ministries that we know and trust and make sure that the money is being used in responsible ways and not administrative costs and so on. This year, the Bishop's Committee has asked Patty 
to make the selections for the year. So we will not be voting on it, but she's, uh, you're going to tell us about it? I can tell you okay. about it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you for um, overseeing so much of what happens on outreach and also for all the other people that do so much to make this, you know, such a visible little little thing that's so visible in the greater community. So I am so am amazed and appreciative of all that happens for that. Um, always, and I remember it, I, I remember my very first interview here in March of 2004 sitting in this room in a circle with um, the Bishop's Committee at the time. And one of the members of the Bishop's Committee was Ann Nielsen. And Ann asked me what I was going to do about children and youth. And I said, well, glad you asked. That is one of the most near and dear things to my heart because I've always been in Christian education for young people. Um, my degree in college, my bachelor's degree in college was child development, family life. So as I've been thinking over the last few um, days and weeks about where my, our outreach gift might go this year, one of the things that I am in conversation with, um, with the school district is figuring out whether or not there are children who do not have the ability to pay for lunch and or if there is debt in the school lunch programs. So I'm in conversation with those folks and um, for whatever reason I know, well I know the reason, it's because of the weather we've had in the last week. Um, there's been a lack of being able to communicate. But if that turns out to be true, our outreach monies for the last six months or so and probably some of my discretionary money will go towards offsetting the cost of meals for breakfast and lunch for kids in the school district who are not able to pay for it or have significant debt, which um, lessens their ability to procure uh, the hot lunch. They get cold lunch or they cook cold breakfast. So um, that's what I'm hoping to do. So uh, there you go. Thank you. Um, okay. Yeah, Dan. Okay. Okay. Um, that's okay. So there's a couple of things over here. Well, I can I can read them too. So um, all right. So Melissa is recovering from COVID, so we thought it was best not to be in person today. That makes sense, James. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Melissa, I hope you're getting better. Um, no fun. Uh, Zoom folks, the sentence Cindy started before the mic was on was expressing gratitude for the size of the 2024 outreach budget. Sorry about the mic delay. Oh, that was you, Dan. Okay. Very sorry. Sorry. Uh, Mary saying thanks. You. Um, Kelly will send us information on the shelter move for the next newsletter. Um, yeah, I wondered what was going on uh, because I knew that they had, um, I knew that they had needed to get out of the uh, place that they were in, and um, they did it more quickly than they originally had hoped for because the staff and some of the members of the, the clients who are living there came down with COVID. So they were isolating everybody. So they opted to just to get everybody into a motel room, isolated, um, so that they could all heal up and stuff. But I had no idea that that was what they were intending to do. So uh, thanks for passing that on, Kelly. It'll be interesting to see where, they, where the folks end up. So um, I'm gonna go back here so I remember everybody on my list. Um, I want to um, give my deep, deep appreciation for uh, the staff that I am privileged to work with and you are privileged to have on hand to take care of so many of the little things. Um, first of all, Julie, for your work in sharing music with us. Um, <laughs> They, they say that people who sing 
pray twice. Um, I think people who play um, are also in that category, but maybe they get triple because what they play prays for them, um, prays for us as well, because um, we could not have the kind of worship we have without your presence, without your gifts, and without your gracious way that you share them. Um, I can't imagine church with no music or stumbling through music. Um, and you are a gifted, gifted musician um, for whom the spirit is very close to your heart. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and uh, next is Holly. Um, you have um, set yourself uh, two months ahead of me <laughs> by birth and by retirement and by Social Security benefits <laughs> and, and Medicare. Um, so uh, in November, Holly stepped aside as our um, administrator. Um, you did wonderful work. Uh, I know that it was a very steep learning curve to get all the minutia of social media and to sort of cull the internet for things to post on our Facebook pages and, um, and whatnot. And the transition into constant contact and taking over the newsletter um, was a big job. Um, and I know took many hours, uh, both here and at home. So I'm very grateful for that. I think that our presence, I know that our presence online out in the community in that regard um, has made a huge difference um, in how people recognize us, um, the comments that are made online um, in response to posting and recording the sermon and posting that online. So many thanks, many, many thanks. Um, I appreciate all you've done to organize things. And um, as much as our personalities may be different as far as I fly by the seat of my pants, um, more times than not, um, you are the one that kind of grabs my feet and pulls me down and says, you know, I need this now. Um, a week and a half ahead of time and I'm like, why? But it might change. You never know. So thank you. Thank you. We all thank you. Um, to Lynette, who has taken over that, that job, um, there are um, lots of changes coming for all of that because as one person comes into something else, they have different ideas, different ways of doing things, different gifts, different skills. So, um, and we've seen some of that already. And so I give thanks for that. You're also our wonderful cleaner, uh, keeping the place looking decent enough so that when we have people come in, um, we don't, you know, we don't look like the kitchen's been trashed on a Sunday morning and nobody's bothered to clean it up. Um, but, uh, and the bathrooms are clean and whatnot. So thank you for all you do and all you will continue to do. Um, one of the gifts that Lynette brings is that she has been through a search committee before. Ah. <laughs> so her wisdom will be helpful. Bonus, bonus, bonus gift. A bonus gift. Uh, Cindy also has been a, on a search committee. Ah. Maybe more than one. Somebody's been on more than one. You? Lynette's been on two. So Larry's been on one, and Cindy's been on two, and Cindy's been on a search committee and a vestry at the same time. So that will be helpful as you kind of work through all of this. Um, Cindy, you're, uh, it's been fun to work with you on um, liturgy, on planning, um, the, the, the prayer table, worship. Um, I was in a conversation uh, yesterday uh, with Lisa Ozida, who is the Christian ed person at Epiphany right now. And she said, I love the creative part of doing this. And I said, well, the, the creative part will be more sacramental when you are, are ordained to the priesthood. And I said, that's not that to say that what you're doing isn't sacramental now, but it will be sacramental when you are a priest and being in a congregation where you are the priest. 
it's true. And I said to her, one of the things you will get to do is be creative as you bring liturgy to the, to the body, to the people. And that's really true. And that's been one of the reasons I'm sure that I have been a priest for as long as I have, is to have had the playground, and I've always said the sandbox, in which we can play to create liturgy that's good liturgy and that gives grace and thanks and praise to God. That's always been one of the things that's been the most enjoyable, the most fun, and the most blessed for me. And to work with Cindy on that and work with Sue Perringer before that has always been such a huge gift. And so I want to give thanks to you for all that. Um, that's going to continue. Um, a lot of things that um, I used to do, like putting the bulletin together, Cindy is now going to be doing. Um, that's kind of crazy for me because it was always part of my process to put the bulletin together because I, I knew what the readings were earlier in the week and I knew kind of what was going on and now Cindy's doing it and it's like, I gotta look at the bulletin. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> so, so that's, you know, th that's gonna be good. That's gonna help carry us, you all through this, this transition time because the liturgy is what brings us together and how we worship together will be a constant in the midst of all of this, even though some of the players change. Um, fine, uh, then Ted for being treasurer, thank you. Uh, you're keeping us on the up and up and um, you'll have to find somebody that's just gonna say to you, you know, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> Um, and that's you all, <laughs> because you're the ones that are going to keep it be okay, um, and uh, and help him keep his blood pressure down yeah. when when he gets to around to um, writing checks and balancing the books every month. Um, it will be a good thing that, gosh, 60, 70 percent of the budget every month wasn't going to go to one person, um, and so that'll be a good thing. So. Um, Hold, hold steady with him, hold steady with yourself. That will be good. Uh, finally, I wanna give thanks to Terry, who's not here today, but her efforts in, in holding gatherings for our youngest people is really, really important. Um, while we don't have very many, um, there is a dedication there that is really, really valuable and really, really helpful. And as you all continue to reach out and be disciples in the world and bring people in, um, the kids will come. They will come. They came when we did this early on with Stephanie um, and the Godly Play program. Cycled through. And we, we cycled keep, through, keep through and we keep and cycling through. Make. Yep, the kids grow up. And those, those babies, those babies are seniors in high school, Jason and Amy. And, um, and they've graduated from high school and they've gone on. Some are in college. Uh, some, are some are married with children of their own. That is true. That is true. So, we keep doing that again. Yeah. and we can keep doing that again. And you will. You will. I have no doubt that you will. Um, with with another one on the way. So there you go. We got to nurture that that little family so that you know if they get a little bit older, they can do fun stuff. Um, I got everybody there. Um, one of the gifts that I get to do every year is uh, present an award for the Cross of St. Clair. Um, we have been doing, this was here well before I got here. And it's been fun and the, these are posted in the, those are hung, hanging in the other room. And if you go look at them, um, it's really kind of fun to see who's been on these lists and, and why. Um, and they are an amazing assortment of you all. And uh, it has been a blessing uh, for me every year to, to choose someone who is deserving of this award. Um, the Cross of St. Clair is in recognition and appreciation for outstanding dedication and commitment of Christ's church. Um, this year, I couldn't decide. So I've got two. Uh, the first one um, was an easy one. 
um, as I've just said, uh, goes to Julie Royson for our music. So, yes. Thank you. You can come up here if you want. Photos, photos. Photos, photos. Photos, photos. <laughs> Come on, it's okay. <laughs> so you have that one right there. Okay. okay. The second one is a combined award to Ted and Terry Meyer for all the work that they have done. And you get to come up here. And I'm sorry Terry's not here, but we'll, we'll celebrate with her later. But um, yeah, you in your music, as I said, has been just such a gift, such a gift. And you've been here since? 2012. 2012. Wow. So 12 years. Wonderful. Oh my God. <laughs> I am so blessed. Thank you. So blessed. And you've been here, what, a little over a year? Two yeah. years? No. Two years? Well, so we've got. A little more. <laughs> no, you probably got two? two? Probably closer two. to two. It's about two. Yeah. A little over. A little, a little more than two. Dove right in, though. Yeah. But he dove right in. So why don't you put your hand here and you put your hand there? We'll do a photo op. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think. I think you were. Anyway, this will go on the wall in the other room. Um, in gracious gratitude, my thanks for wait, everything wait. you've done. What? There's one more. On here, award. Yes. On behalf of the bishops' committee and the congregation, I would like to present the cross of Saint Clair to Patty Baker. Ah. Oh. Wow. <laughs> She did. She did. She did. I couldn't quite figure out why it was so important for you to go get it. She confessed to me beforehand she was going to have to take a, tell a little lie. She no, no. She actually, she didn't. Oh. She just said she was going to go pick him up, and I was like, well, all right. If you're going to be there, fine. Works for me. Oh, bless you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Congratulations. We love you. Oh, and I love yeah. you. Thank you. That's so cool. Very, very cool. All right. Well, we'll get that. We'll get that screwed on, and then we'll get another picture in a, after church. Okay. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, Jill, and Cindy. Very good. All right. Um, that's all I have, except to bless something on the floor. Is there other business, <coughs> other questions, other needs, other anything we that we need to do? And do we know? We are going to retire that one. The plaque is full, and many people no longer remember or know who Ken was. And so it's not a bad thing to retire an award. Um, those of us who knew Ken uh, were blessed by his presence. Um, and I would say we're kind of getting on to the point where there's a lot of people that have no idea who he was. But he was a gifted friend to this place and held the place together for a long, long time. So um, the last thing I want to do before we move on is um, bless this. And it isn't a prayer shawl. It's a baby blanket. I got to take it out. We know it's another girl. Isn't that sweet? Isn't that beautiful? So. Hannah did that one. Yes, Hannah. Hannah was the knitter. It's a beautiful pattern. And it's really soft. <laughs> Let's bless this. Gracious and holy God, we give you thanks for this baby blanket. May the child who is wrapped up in it be blessed. 
be known by you and be known by this community as a blessing, as a gift, mostly to her parents and her sister, but also to us, this community, who is so excited about her birth and is e exceptionally ready to share smiles when they come, laughs and giggles when they come, and the love of her mom and dad and big sister. In the name of God, may this baby blanket be a blessing. May it wrap her up in our love. And I give thanks for Hannah who made it and all of us who give it. Amen. 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 May I say something? You may. Come up to the mic so people can hear you. And I'm going to take this back to Daddy. <laughs> You're welcome. Isn't that soft? It's so soft. Yeah. For I'll so give you the, the blanket you the is bag. probably from all of us. But um, it's special for me to have done it because Virtue was born in my hometown. Oh, really? And we didn't know that until I mentioned Kitsingen once. And she came up to me and she said, did you say Kitsingen? I said, yes. She said, my family and I were stationed in Kitsingen, and I was born in Kitsingen. <gasps> so this to me is just unbelievable, because it's yes. the first time in 62 years that <laughs> I met somebody from my hometown. Oh, yeah. So um, cool. they all mean a lot to me. Yeah. So that's why I did that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Oh. Do I have to adjourn the meeting? If you'd like to, you can. <laughs> Your last official act as senior <laughs> warden. I now adjourn this meeting. <laughs> <laughs>